Good morning. I'm going to have a wander about with Mark Blog here. This morning, I'm going to take you around the Norwegian Science and Technology Museum, just outside Oslo here. At the front, beautiful day. We'll get inside, get my tickets, and I'll show you what's here. Have a look at some music machines. A history there, look. Portable music. That old gramophone at the back's cool, isn't it? That reminds me of my youth. Child of the 80s. Sounds on wire and wow, look at this. This is a Lockman's disc playing music box. It's a forerunner of the jukebox. I've never seen one of them. Where was that? It's a computer music program? No, that's not. That's an all-in-one sampler and drum machine. Oh, there's some buttons to press here, look. The Beatles, Strawberry Field, played on the... <laughs> this is cool, let's have a look at this, shall we? This is this. Strawberry fields. Yeah, oh, Loved and hated. This barrel organ was constructed around 1900. Barrel organ makers from this region produced over 600 high quality instruments starting in the mid 1800s. Well, there we go. I'm going to fill you full of some facts as we go around. Not everything. Whatever's that? That's a cylinder lyre. It's produced in Denmark. It's a rarity among mechanical musical instruments. It's made in order to bring dance music into private homes and could be rented by the hour. It's convenient size, made it easy to transport. And there we go. Look at that, that's an old music playing device, isn't it? So this was for kings and princes. I can't pronounce it, that's what it says. I'll let you read this one yourself. Though. Like I say, I'll pause, pause it if you want to read it. I'll hold it here for a second. And we're back here. Yeah, good selection of music boxes, isn't there? There's a couple of old looking gramophones here I didn't get in. I'll show you these. Look, look at them. Looks like the HMV logo. <laughs> This is not a gramophone, apparently. This record player is a Pathfon from 1912. The Path Brothers were the founders of France's largest film and music company. In the 1980s, they imported American record players and produced the recordings themselves. They also developed their own recording systems. There we go. I think it's all going today in the film industry. That's the music section. Oh, I've never played a theremin before. My daughter seemed pretty good at it, don't she? Lovely tune. Ah. That shelled enough a big bang, eh? <laughs> Bob 
binary code action. So this is down in the, the science center, it says. That's some interactive exhibits. Yeah. And a couch to have a little sit down on. Electric motor. I know what you do there. All right, I think it's a sand cannon. I think if I hit that hard enough here, look, it'll shoot the sound. I'm guessing. Let's we'll see if I can make it work, shall we? Let's have a look. I'll do it while I'm holding the camera. It'll be a bit harder, but we'll try. So we'll hold that there. See, if we'll zoom in a bit. And I'll see if that can work. Nothing. One more try. <laughs> See that? It worked. There's a sound wave moving it. It's quite cool, isn't it? Resume your back out. Hello. It goes back down there. It's quite cool. What we got here? Turn the wheel. Sure, where I'm turning it to here, but I'm going to show you what's here. I'm going to have a little play with some of the machines and things myself. I'm not sure what this is. Lunar Lander. Can you perform a perfect lunar touchdown like Neil and Buzz? To do so, use the joysticks to navigate the Lunar Lander. Oh, oh, I'm flying, I'm crashing. Master alarm, you crashed because your speed is too high and your level is not flat enough. I'll try with two hands in a bit. This is cool, there's loads of exhibits. There. Ends of a cool looking clock there, look at that. Lovely little clock. It's random, what have we got here? Talk into one end of the tube and listen to the other end. The speed of sound is tempered air. The speed of sound in tempered air is 344 meters per second. The tube is 100 meters long. The sound of your voice uses 0.291 seconds to reach your ear. Even if this is a short delay, it makes it difficult talking to yourself. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Ah. I don't really get anything from that, if I'm honest. And bowling balls, what we have here? Well, that's huge. I'll go down that bit in a bit. We've got a workshop that's open at two to three. A lift takes to another level. That's quite cool. You can pull yourself up in a pulley style chair, look. Spin this. We have a model plane here, look. I'm not sure what make, but we've got a motorbike. It's in a Porsche in a minute. Oh, it's like a, it's like a simulator Porsche. Look, you race the car. You see on the screen. Look. That's cool. Now we're playing that when it's not busy. Wow, it's huge. There's so much here. A little sciencey cool things. <laughs> Where is this? Water waste from basin showers and baths can be recycled new so this is a uh, sewage water description, lovely. Wow, what have we got in here? Not sure that's a a model of a port or a offshore rig, I think. 
啊，塞车了。Yeah, it's one of the largest North Sea oil rigs. Three big country platforms are installed here from 79 to 85. And there we go. Let me uh, switch up my settings here so you can see a bit better because we're in a bit dark here, aren't we? Tomorrow's all workers, no way. Let me put that in here so you can have a little read, look. And we get a little, a little cabin. Let's have a little play in this seat, shall we? Do do here. Wow, this is where they... All work and moves everything like that. It's quite cool, isn't it? The boats don't do anything, I'll be honest, but... <coughs> That's huge. I wasn't. I, I did no research on this place. Just kind of turned up. See, it was here. I, like I, I bought because I'm only on Oslo for, 20, um, for 48 hours. We bought the Oslo 48-hour travel pass. Yeah, and including in that Oslo travel pass costs 50 pound, I think for 48 hour travel pass in Oslo, but that will get you on every bus, tram, train, and ferry in the Oslo and surrounding areas, but also includes many benefits, at, like this museum was free entry with the pass. And you're talking about 25 pound per person to get in this museum, so it was well worth it. We're also gonna to go to a couple of other museums in Oslo a bit later today, which are also including in the price of the travel ticket. So yeah, I'd recommend if you're coming to Oslo, looking into buying a Oslo Travel Pass, they're called. They have their own website. You download it to your phone, you get a QR code, and you can scan it when you come into the locations for free entry. A little stand here for boots. All sorts in here, aren't there? All sorts. Old drill, is it? Ah, it's been locked off, I can't turn it. And now we're back inside the oil rig area, I think. Cool screens around the side, look, imitating the centre of the sea in an oil rig. It's not somewhere I've had a lot of experience in. And your clothing here, look. Yeah, I'll get back around here see how I can find you lot. Why are so many interactive things look? Games down here, let's have a quick look. I'll find my family in a minute, I don't know where they're gone. Um, a little, little ball game down here. Yeah, we're back to where I came around at the start. Lots of blocks here, look, <laughs> wow. A bit of a tower. Make some shadows. Somebody's knotted up all this. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? I've got to sort that out. That's just frustrating me. And that one there, that one there, that one there. See if we can work there, shall we? Stop them swinging first. Oh, we've got to wait for them to stop swinging. Just setting them up. Ready? Rubbish. Failure. <laughs> well, I'll have a look at this Porsche to be honest. <laughs> I don't know what this is all about. 
That one there. 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 And there and that one there. I'm overweight. I'm not sure what I'm meant to do. I'm going to try and get it to 20 or more. So if I take that one off. If I take that one off. If I take seven, five, six, seven. Boom, bang on. Don't want to understand the point of that, but, you know, I've met the target. <laughs> right, I'm going to have a little mill around here and read some stuff, and I'll show you the next level when I get there. Let's have a look at some clocks. Some old clocks. There's Science Museum since they have everything at the moment. We're only on the first floor, I think it's four floors. From Leicester Square, this one, look. There's not an English translation, unfortunately, with this. I'm not moaning at that, I'm in Norway. I'm surprised there's any English translations. I don't expect it, unlike a lot of English. No, another British clock, obviously famous for grand grandfather clocks over in Britain. That's an old one though, isn't it? 1740. Worth a pretty penny, I'm sure. 1710, this one. Look at that. Some, some odd work there, isn't it? Look at that. All hand carved. I don't know what that is. Oh, I, that's because I leant over the line. Oh, that was my. Don't lean over the line. Lots and lots of clocks. Wow. Oh, it's a uh, clockmaker's bench, I'm guessing. All the tools of the trade going up through the years. Now we have the inners of some clocks here. Some old watches. Now yeah, that's the clock section. Some light spectrum. It's down in here, shall we? And see me change colour and about four of me turn up, look. It's trippy, isn't it? It's cool on the camera. That's fun. So this little section here, we've got lots of um, history of medicine and treatments and hospitals and things like that. If there's any English translations, I'll let you know. But I mean, some of these devices look horrific. Glad I wasn't alive going through hospital treatment 200 years ago, I'll put it that way. It's a little more modern there. We've got a very pleasant looking bench. And over here, look, we've got an old style ambulance. Let's have a look in the back, shall we? We can't get in, but. Yeah. yeah. Full scale mini steam engine from 1906 here. New locomotive, from Proctor and Co. Made in Lincoln. Finds itself in Oslo, Norway. There you go, look. 1865. Hmm. I've got a, a 1917 log and cutter. A very similar design today. Modernised a bit, but the principles are the same, aren't they? If you've seen a log splitter before. Two or three different examples of them here. It's a plane or a slicker. <laughs> it's basically a hand 
It's all going up and down there, look. And it comes out this end. I guess, yeah, lovely cut. Norwegians have always been good with wood, let's be honest. There's some cars. We've got a Beetle. We've got a Mercedes-Benz 190, 1957. We have a Datsun Bluebird, 1960s. Look at that. I like them, they'll be worth a pretty penny nowadays. But not as much as the 1965 Ford Cortina, look at that. Classic car there. I can't go over the lines, unfortunately, but I can see a sort of inside, look. Next to this, we have a Ford Tyrannus. A Volvo 244 police car from 1986. And something close to where I live. The Lotus Elise S1 type 111, 1998. I still think they're nice cars. That was this. And we got some sort of modern Oslo transport here. Let's have a look. This is the, this is Oda. She's a self-driving bus from 2019. They tried out self-driving buses in Oslo. Oda was the name of one of the first driverless buses that went on a regular route. She operated the 35 route. The maximum speed was 18 kilometers. Huh. Oh yeah, and a uh, you know, big, big plane on up here, look, on the ceiling. Is that an old Boeing? Let's have a look, it says here. I'm not sure what it is, to be honest. It's the Kavalei jet aircraft. It was the first to be used in Norway and marked the entrance of the SAS into the jet age. The jets increased the capacity of air traffic substantially, exotic destinations were made available and ticket prices plummeted. SAS being the Scandinavian airline, not the British SAS. Very different. We have a 1985 Mercedes. Yeah, rush damage on the wheels. <laughs> this car was bought for the office of the Prime Minister in 1985 and primarily used by the Go Harland Brutland. It was also in use at state visits and for transportation of winners of the Nobel Prize in the end of the 80s and the early 1990s. Well, there we go. Yeah, of course, helicopter. Why wouldn't there be? <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? I like. Stuff like this, where they just have random things in random places. So what helicopter do we have here? This is the Bell Aircraft Corporation. Model 47i, 1946. That was old. Well, that's one of the oldest choppers I've seen, I think, 1946. Biplane up here, look. I'm going to try and get under the wingspan of this jet engine. This is cool. I'm impressed with this museum. I think I can go in the plane. So we have a little look and then we'll come back and see out here in a second. Let's see if we can get in here. This Scandinavian airline. All propped up. Yeah, the doors are open. Oh, it's, it's fenced off, I think. I don't think we're allowed in there. Yeah, have a little look up there, look. No, I think you can go in there sometimes, but not right now, unfortunately. We have a cockpit example here. A mock-up cockpit. Some engines. Yeah, there's the, the jet propulsion engine there. I'm guessing for this plane. Oh, no, it's a de Havilland turbojet engine. This is cool, you know I'm into my aircraft, check out the other vlogs, my aircraft related trips. Engineering fascinates me. I mean, look at that. The units of a jet engine. Stuck underneath this plane here. Oh, what's this? Look at this plane. I've never seen nothing like that. Look at the front there. 
Whatever's that, some sort of seaplane, I'm guessing. I can't pronounce it, it's a 1914, one of them. So on July the 30th, 1914, the Norwegian adventurer, someone Gran, made the first flight over the North Sea. He took off from Cruden Bay in Scotland and landed four and a half laters in Norway. The distance was nearly 300 miles, and in 1909, Louis Berrer had become the first pilot to cross the English Channel. Gran was trained at Berrer's aviation school in Paris and made his North Sea flight in this monoplane. I'd rather him than me. We have a 1916 caddy. Oh, a pretty penny, I should think. Could get even older over here, look. 1913. The Farman Loghorn was the first aircraft to be employed by the Norwegian Army. To the 1920s, 13 airplane were in service. The first one came from France in 1912. The General World War I has a shortage in supplies and the army led to build its own planes in Oslo. And there we go. <laughs> That's a proper old plane, look at that. I wouldn't want to fly in that, would you? Wow. I mean, honestly, sex in there. Imagine crossing the ocean and in this. Proper hats off. It's made of wood, man. It's wood and tape, look. I mean, they had they had some kahunas across the ocean in it, I can tell you. You won't get me doing it. What else have I got around here? We have an air balloon basket up here. From New Orleans, apparently. Wow, even more. I didn't know this was here. I'm blown away, to be fair. Like your normal science museum fair. The first police car in Oslo. Well, there we go. Let me make of that. We've got the Opal Dart Wagon, 1911. Opal forever started car production in 1902. Opal soon became one of the most, le uh, one of the top leading manufacturers in Germany. The medical profession quickly took the car into its professional use. This model was given especially popular and it was nicknamed the Doctor Wagon. It was small, fast, and rarely broke down. The car belonged to a doctor in Oslo. In 1899, Wartburg. Cars are coming a long way, aren't they? I mean, they've got steering wheels now. <laughs> That's a piece of art, that is. 1912, Produs. I'm blown away to be fair, I'm very impressed with this museum. Like I say, it was free because I bought the Oslo Pass. My travel ticket for the 48 hours I'm in Oslo. And it included entry to most of the museums. If not, big discounts to the ones you don't get in free. So what else have we got? We've got Daniel's bus from 1917. I think that's this actually. It's more like a bus, doesn't it, from... Looks rather grand, doesn't it? I quite like the look of that. And just here, look at this. Look what we got here. Let me come round to the badge. We have a 1925 Bugatti. Found in Italy by Bugatti himself. That's amazing. Look at that, I don't think I've ever seen one of them in real life. I've seen them on the telly and, well, in computer games to be honest, but... Wow. One of the fastest cars in the world back in this day. <laughs> Old school SO pumps, look. So we've got the Ford Model T, the car that Made cars popular, I suppose. Sold over a million of them, Henry Ford, 1903. Started the Model T company in Detroit five years later. The Model T was interdicted. It was a practical car that became a large sales success. Henry Ford introduced mass production techniques and used an assembly line for the production of the car in 1914. This contributed to a new standard of modern industrial production. Thank you, Mr. Henry Ford. Properly impressed I am. 
have a little look here that we got a Sopworth ABC 1920. We got a Triumph 1908 Triumph just down here. Look. Obviously, it's not this bus thing I was pointing at. That is. I don't know what that is. It says here's an aeroplane. Oh, that's above me. Look at this. Hanging from the ceiling is a fly aeroplane, 1912. And back in 1912, this aeroplane spent the speed flight record. An old tram. They've come on a lot. They've changed a lot since these days, haven't they? Are they inside there? Bygone age. Nin 1894. Wow. The first electric tram line in Scandinavia opened for business in Oslo in 1894. AEG in Berlin delivered the trams and electrical equipment. Each tram seated 16 and had standing room for 12 additional passengers and they averaged just above 9 mile an hour. It's quite fast for 1894. Alright, let's see what else I can find. British steamroller. I didn't know we invented the steamroller. There we go. Get a good angle of this up here, look. Wow, look at that. Oh, so, upstairs in this crazy room, we have a steam train. Like a whole train. So this is, well, I can't pronounce that. This is that. Let you take a little read. There we go, have a little pause if you want to read it all. I've just read it, it has a load of 14 metric tons and the total weight of 42 metric tons. I hope they reinforced the ceiling <laughs> before they drop this 42 ton drain on it. Can we have a look inside or not? I can have a look up on here, but I can't go in. Look inside there, look. Wow, imagine operating that. Looks so grand, doesn't it? But also rudimental and basic. Does that make sense? Mm. I mean, the, oh, the cabin's locked off. We can't go in the train. I can show you through the window. I don't know what you can see, but... And we have a little mock cabin here, I think. This is what it would have looked like inside. Uh, have a little sit down, get on a train. Yeah, that's cool. Right, what else have we got? We've got a selection of bikes here. Look at that. It's the original Vespa, I think, 1949. Wow. Tempo Let, 1954. We've got a Tempo Standard, 1955. I don't know this off the top of my head, by the way, I'm reading the signs. Not really up to date with bikes. Henderson Model Z, 1919. I'm very impressed with the vehicles and motorbikes I have here. We have a Yami, Yamaha 750cc, 1973. Jawa CZ, 1957. Yeah, let's have a look. The 1949 Scooter Vespa. Well, how much that'll be worth on the general market nowadays? Not cheap. Yeah, so we have some demonstration rooms and presentation rooms. I'm not too sure what time the shows are on. 1926-27 Harley Davidson here, look. Look at that. I'm very impressed here. Speedway bike here. 
from when? 1950s, wow, look at that. What's this car here? I've never seen one of them. It is a Norwegian made car. Self constructed. Wow. And the troll. Another view of the helicopter from this angle, look. Another view of the massive plane they've got up here. And that plane up there, look. Aerial view of the helicopter. Oh, let me zoom in the right way. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, good little wander around. Just stop now, bought myself a prawn baguette. A wonderful cost of coffee. I recommend the prawn baguette. Very fresh prawns. Lovely. So yeah, about the front now. We're having a look at the Berglund Eyed Electronic Arc Furnace. A little bit of information about it there if you're interested. If I'm honest, I'm not sure what an arc furnace is. It's a big old thing though, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, so I spin back around. It's the front of the Science and Technology Museum here in Oslo. If you've never been, I'd highly recommend a visit. It was great. I didn't know what to expect. And it was really, really good. Full-size planes, trains, bikes, planes. It was mad. Lots of interactive exhibits. Good calf. Good price. If you're in Oslo, come and try it out. Thank you for joining me. See you guys in the next vlog.